Hey everyone, this is uh, Restless Movies. I just wanted to make this little video. This is my dog, my beagle. She is, she's a really a beagle mix, mostly beagle. She's six years old, and I know a lot of people have went through this. She was diagnosed um, four weeks ago with lymphoma, and we, you know, it was a perfect storm. We know we noticed that she had like swollen lymph nodes on the side of her neck, and we waited a while because we we're like, my spouse is a nurse, and I also work in healthcare. It might be an infection, you know. Well, anyway, they didn't go away. So finally, we knew pretty much before we took her in because it wasn't going away that um, it was like a lymphoma. So we took her to the vet. They diagnosed her. Um, first, I was, um, I, you know, you don't know what to do. She's, she's only six years old. She was a rescue. We got her when she was like two. I have a sheep -a doodle that I bought as a pup that was only like eight weeks old and I figured he needed a mom and uh, both our other dogs died of old age. So, um, we got her and, uh, she's been a really good dog. Um, but anyway, getting back to the lymphoma. So of course you can try chemo, but like I said, it was the perfect storm. We were in the middle of, uh, buying a new house. Um, and you know, chemo was out of the question just just the sheer amount of money we were going to pay for a house and we were selling a house at the same time. So we're scrambling and I, you know, you don't want to let them go. And so I said, at the very least, I want to get her on prednisone, <clears throat> the steroid to help her out. And, um, you know, I, you know, I at least wanted her to make it to the next, our next house and be able to, I, you know, I don't know. It's just stupid. It's just, you know, I was thinking, you know, her to see the house to be there. My old other dog who moved with us four different times, we bought three different houses and rented one and her old butt made it to every house, even our, our final one back then and was able to live with us for a couple months before it was her time. And she lived to, to a pretty good old age for a dog her size. But anyway, prednisone didn't work. It may have been working, but she was acting really weird. She was having accidents in the house. She was just really strange acting on it. Um, and a little angry too, a little aggressive. Um, so we took her off of it. <sighs> so with that being said, she's on nothing. All I do is give her uh, fish oil and, um, and try and give her mostly like meat. I don't try and give her anything that really has a lot of carbs. It's mostly everything meat. If I have to cook it like Turkey, um, she always gets first dibs on everything, even over, even over the big old, I have 120 pounds, sheep -a doodle Over him, she always gets first dibs. Um, you know, she deserves it. Right now, um, about a week ago, her whole face up here got swollen. And um, so it was swollen, and I was like, oh, crap, it's time. I mean, not where I wasn't rushing out to try and go put her to sleep or something. But I was like, oh, crap, I'm just waiting, you know, like, for, you know, to, like, she's in too much pain. I have to take her in. And I've done it. Have to, I've had to do it before. It's one of the hardest things you have to do. Um, and most of my other dogs died of an old age. It's really hard to do when your dog's only six years old, you know. So it sucks. Um, so, anyway, it went down. So it went down her neck. I don't even want to touch it. I, I know it's does supposedly not supposed to hurt, but I don't want to mess with her like that. I don't, you know, so, but it went down and she was fine. Uh, her nose was, I'm talking about, she was puffy. She looked like a whole different dog in the face type of thing. She looked like a, um, she looked almost like a bull terrier in the face. And, uh, and, uh, so it went down and she was fine. She, her energy is lower now. It is, uh, but she still got it, and she's still Lucy. That's her name, Lucy. And um, but then all of a sudden, a couple days ago, I started noticing. I did get in the refrigerator, and she's always there. She's always been there. Her, the sheep dog, somebody, but she's always somewhere around. She kept nudging me, like with her nose next to me, nudging me, and you know. And back in the day, they get yelled at for hey, you know. 
get your little butt back or whatever. But you know what? She's she's past that, you know. But I was like, why does she keep nudging me? Like with her nose or bumping into me and all this. And I started giving her food and I started noticing that I think she can't see or she can't see well. And she could see, but I noticed her her left, uh, was it her left or her right eye, I think it was, was really red. And uh, her whole face was swollen up. So around her eyes and everything back, uh, about just uh, probably about a week ago. So I was like, I told my spouse, I think she's uh, blind in one eye. She looked too and she said she probably is. Well, yesterday, or yesterday the day before, she's fully blind. Um, she went blind. Um, it's harder to tell with dogs because dogs, as long as their sniffer works, um, as long as their sniffer works, they can, um, you a lot of times can't tell they're blind. I had, a another beagle. She was, he was diabetic. He lived to, to be 10 years old and five of those years he was diabetic. Um, and he went blind pretty quick. We didn't even catch it in time, but we didn't know it for like I probably didn't know it for two weeks because his sniffer, he, he knew his way around the house. You wouldn't even know until finally I threw him a snack and he just stood there staring at me. <laughs> and that dog would not. He'd, he'd break a hip jumping up trying to get a snack from you, you know. So, uh, yeah. So she's blind now. Um, she's been breathing a little hard. And her breaths, and it's been like this for a couple weeks, she breathes a little bit more rapid. Um, than she used to but right now she's sleeping and she sleeps all the time but she's always been like that she's a she's a beagle they sleep a lot but if you can see the bottom of her neck right there how swollen it is you know um, I wish I could do something about it but you know you can't so all you can do is you know make them comfortable um, she was a good dog she is a good dog. So, but she gets what she wants, you know, right now. I can't, I, the only thing that sucks about her being blind is, you know, I can't take her on walks or anything. I can, but it would take us a decade to get home probably. And her energy's low that I could see her doing like my other beagle did or, or my um, Labrador did when old age finally hit her laying down, down on me and me having to carry him back. So... <laughs> You know, that's just how it is. But, you know, it sucks. And I had to look it up because lymphoma with dogs, I've never had a dog with lymphoma. <clears throat> you know, it could hit them after that age of five or six. And she's just right at six. And that's what, that's what sucks about it. And, you know, if she had had it like later in life, you know, and you can't, you don't have any choice in it. She doesn't have any choice in it. You know, when she, you know, six years old, man, you're like, man six you know she's just now getting to be a real couch potato and six you know will chemo work possibly but like i said it's a perfect storm and i know there's other people that have been in our situation too where you know i bought a new house and we haven't even moved yet and you're just in everything i have a 10 year old you know you're just trying to do everything and then all of a sudden something happens to your dog and you're like ah oh. I've spent a lot of money. My other beagle, I spent thousands of dollars for years. I used to order insulin from Canada for this dog. Rush, rush home from work. I give him his insulin in the morning. Check his blood sugar. Check it in his ear. That's where I'd always check it. Give him his, his insulin. And then give him his insulin. Rush home from work and give him his insulin again. I did that for years and years. Chemo's thousands of dollars. And it just happened at the wrong time. It really did. It happened at the wrong time. You know, we bought the house. Um, I start a new semester. I'm in school um, in like a um, two weeks, less than two weeks. And like I said, I had 10 year old activities and man, I wish I could. I really wish I could. Um, but I came to terms with it. I was really sad in the beginning. You know, it's your dog, you know. You usually say like, oh, you know, a lot of guys, especially men, uh, when it's time for him to go, it's time for him to go. Yeah, you say that. But when it comes to it, I said that with my last beagle and I ended up spending thousands of dollars on that dog to keep his little butt around um, to be bothering me and trying to steal food off your plate when you ain't looking. But hey, it's your dog. It's your pet. So 
I'm gonna keep her comfortable. Um, that's all I can do. Keep her comfortable. Give her what she wants, except for carbs. I try. I try not to give her too many of the carbs because I know. I think it's the the carbs they tell me uh, are, are reading. Excuse me. Can feed feed the cancer, so you want to keep it mostly protein. And she gets her little fish oil, and I give her a little one of my eight, an eighty milligram aspirin. Uh, she never shows any pain. Now that's the thing, but I still give it to her because I, you never know with dogs. Dogs don't show pain a lot of times. You don't even know they're injured sometimes. And my other dog gets screamed at because he's one hundred twenty pounds, and he just he'll just bump into her. He's a herder, and like. I don't let him go out sometimes with her because she'll go outside and he wants to play and she can't see and he's 120 pounds and he you know whacks her knocks her down and man you know come on and um yeah so did I just keep her comfortable she's not dying right now she's just asleep this is how she sleeps Lucy Lucy Lou only thing I worry about her though is this with all that swelling is um brain swelling and because she sometimes looks a little confused, but I think that's more from her, um, the blindness and everything. And I worry about her sniffer because if she loses that, and I don't know what that did to her when her face was swollen. You know, if they don't have eyes, they got a nose. But if they don't got eyes, they don't got a nose. It's just memory of where they walked. So um, but right now she's just sleeping. This is what she does. And she sleeps. Um, and um, that's about it. I can say about it. Uh, one thing, dog goes blind. Make sure if you have stairs that you keep them covered. I have hate for, I had one dog do that when my other beagle went blind. Fall down the stairs and it sounds like a stunt man flying down your, your, your stairs. So, but, uh, this is Lucy. She's got that one right there. She's got a few back here. Um, she might have a couple somewhere else. They're not big like that. So I do, I'm, I have been watching her breathing though because of where that one's located. Um, like I said, she breathes a little harder, a little shorter, but she breathes. She'll get her butt up. She comes and gets food. She gets up and goes outside. Um, you know, she still does her little things when she's up. She sits up. You scratch her little scratcher right there, and she'll keep whacking you, wanting you to keep scratching type of thing. She's always done. Just a little less energy. She's a little bit more also with it. I think it's safety, too, with her. And she stays in places where she knows. So she'll sleep right here or lay right here. Or she's got to always be next near us. So I'll put her up on the bed. Um, or she goes under the table. So the bigger dog, I think she thinks the bigger dog's going to walk over or something. Uh, and sometimes he's he's young. He's only three years old. And so he, you know, he can be clumsy and make sure she doesn't get hurt on accident because he's just a big dummy right now. Um, so you just what, what I do with her, I keep her... I try and keep her, you know, doing, you know, doing the best that I can. One thing I'll say to end this video, though, um, when it came time for my dog, when it was time to let go with my Labrador, when she was getting ready to pass and one morning, she was 14, uh, yeah, 14 years old. And one morning she couldn't get up. <clears throat> and I knew, but it was before that she'd been incontinent for years, so she couldn't be in the house. But I had always had a sunroom that I kept her in. And we, you know, we'd have her in the sunroom. I never have outdoor dogs. So she was in the sunroom or at my new house. She had to be in the garage. So I cut a hole in the freaking garage. I lived in a patio home, new house. And I cut a hole in it and put a doggy door. And through the winter, she had two heaters blowing on her all the time. My car did, wasn't even parked in there. I had, you know, a freaking new Mercedes and it's sitting outside because my dog had to be in there. And, you know, I live in Colorado, but that's just how it had to be. Anyway, one morning, I always check on her because she never, she didn't come out. She's always out in the morning waiting on us. I give her a snack and play with her and stuff. She didn't come out of, the, out of her garage. I go in there. Sure enough, she can't get up. I'm like, oh, crap. And I could look at her. You could look. Sometimes you can look at her and you can see it in her face, you know. And the hardest thing is we got to let go. They, sometimes I think they, they need to go. And they want to go. And... You know, and you can see it, see it in her face. Anyway, getting off of that, what I ended up doing, because I couldn't take her in. I had to do that with my beagle. I had to put him on my car, truck, and he seized, and he had to die. went into a diabetic coma and seized, and wouldn't wake up or get up, and I knew it was time. He lost like 15, 20 pounds. And you know, I was watching him seize on my truck, in my truck, on the seat and stuff, and have to take him in. And I was, that was a hard day. 
but I saw some. No, nah, I can't do this again. I'm I'm not doing that that dang death ride. That's what I call it, death ride. I found a veterinarian, and th there was a veterinarian that, that specializes in, th in this, and they'll come out to your house. I spent four hundred dollars, maybe three, three or four hundred dollars, and it was worth it. Um, and they came out. She came out to my house. Everybody was there. You know, we said our goodbyes to the dog, to our dog, and she put her to sleep, honestly, and, and then stopped her heart. She never woke up. But she made sure she went to sleep, you know, sleep while she's with us and we're petting her and all that stuff and, let, and letting her go because she needed to be let go. Um, you know, you, you try, you do all you can, but at sometimes it's just like sometimes, in, you know, with us, sometimes it's time to let go. Um, she was in pain. Right now, she is not in that much pain, or at least she doesn't show it as much. She sleeps hard. Uh, she sleeps a lot, but she's always been like that. She's probably having a little dream right now. Her little legs keep moving um, type of thing. Um, but we'll take care of her. She'll be okay. Uh, we'll keep her comfortable, and when it's that time, uh, we'll make sure she's well taken care of. See, she still pops up on you. She can't see, though. <laughs> it's the hardest thing, but you know what? I'll take a, bl a blind, alive dog, um, a blind, alive Lucy over one not with me. So, you know, just got to cherish, cherish these moments with her, um, with them. So, you can see right there. But, all right, y'all. That is one. Somebody might be going through the same thing. See this video. And you're not alone. It's tough. I don't know who it's tougher for, us or them. Uh, I think, you know, honestly, sometimes I think it's tougher for me. Because um, I know it's going to be tough to let let her go. But I'm not going to let her be in pain when it comes to that point. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.